Hamrick is with us, senior economic analyst, Bankrate.com. Stephen Rusciuto is with us, U.S. chief economist at Mizuho Securities USA. And I should clarify, the Fed basically is looking for unemployment to rise a little bit, you know, and that's been part of their plan. Um, Stephen Rusciuto, what did you think about today's report on jolts? What did it tell you? Well, to be honest with you, I think you've got a very mixed bag there. You've got a little bit of a reduction in the openings, but there are still substantially more openings uh, than there are uh, hirings taking place, and there's still a lot of hiring taking place. The hiring numbers went up, and the quit rates uh, basically moved up a little bit as well, which tells you the labor market remains tight. The net result of all the data, even though the opening numbers came down, the quit rate and the hirings, telling you this is still a dynamic labor market. That hasn't changed. And as a result of a dynamic labor market, the Fed's not getting what they had hoped for with the current level of rates, which is why they have to stay high for long. Yeah, understood and well said. That was so succinct. Mark Hamrick, some of your thoughts. I don't think the Fed's targeting the labor market. Uh, they would become more attentive to the maximum employment part of their dual mandate if they were to see unemployment rise substantially, obviously at 3.9 percent. That's the least of their worries right now. But what they obviously are targeting is demand. And perhaps one uh, natural byproduct of reduction in demand is, of course, uh, fewer job openings and uh, less hiring. But hiring is still robust and the demand and supply of labor are still out of balance, largely favoring workers if we're speaking of it in the broadest sense. So this is in the context, and I think this is the most important point, of normalization from the almost bizarre situation that we found ourselves as the economy reopened. That was not normal, and we're getting closer to something that is more akin to pre-pandemic levels. Yeah. So at this point now, um, I, I think we did a great summation of, of jolts overall. Um, and, you know, what does it signal going forward? Because if you have the job openings falling to new three-year lows, then we look forward to Friday. Um, how are you feeling about Friday? And this one I'll direct to you, Mark. I mean, are you waiting to see some certain parts of that labor report on Friday? Well, always, Nicole. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the most exciting time of the month, although the CPI release and PCE are exciting as well. Um, I think it'll probably be something of a plain vanilla report unless we have something that shocks us because this job market has remained more resilient and robust than had been expected for so long. The long and often predicted recession didn't materialize over the past two plus years. And, and that is a good thing in the sense of it's almost boring, uh, you know, but it will never be boring. But you know what I'm saying. In other words, we're not being shocked by the release of the employment data. If anything, it's telling the story we've seen for some time now, and that is normalization uh, and uh, and doing so in a in a, a modest pace. And so with all of this, I mean, could we say that the economy is slowing? Stephen Rusciuto, would you be comfortable in saying that there are at least parts of the economy that seem to be slowing? Well, the economy is definitely slowing from last year's 3.1 percent Q4 over Q4 growth number. Is it slowing to below trend? The answer there is no. You don't have to go much beyond the auto sales numbers uh, for the month of May to see that the consumer still has the wherewithal. Auto sales went up to 15 point nine million units. That's a very, very healthy rate. And this is happening in an environment in which everyone is worrying about the uh, sustainability of the consumer side of the economy. You know, big ticket items like consumer spending on autos tells you what's really happening. And this tight labor market is leading to confidence. That confidence and the liquidity in the system and the ability to borrow money is leading to consumers to spend money. And that's going to continue to drive this economy forward. And I think that'll come out of the employment numbers uh, on Friday, which I think will probably be above the street expectation. And I wouldn't even be surprised to see the jobless rate move a tenth lower, uh, back down to 3.8 from 3.9 percent. Imagine the Federal Open Market Committee when they see that. I mean, that is not what they're going for, I don't think. I mean, I don't, I don't want to see their faces when that comes out. Uh, Mark, I'll give you the, the final thought here, at least on this part of the big picture. I mean, the resiliency of the consumer is something. We just talked about cars. I know the prices have been coming down a little bit. Housing, too, the prices have come down a little bit. But the truth of the matter is that mortgage rates are still really high and cars are still really expensive. Uh, thought on the consumer, Mark. 
Well, I think we're looking at these things in aggregate. The reality is that consumers are gravitating toward less expensive cars and staying away from the ones that are at the higher ends of the price spectrum because of this affordability challenge, which is significant. And we're not going to get out of this unless something shocking happens. In other words, if a recession were mater to materialize, that's one of the byproducts of higher for longer. We may be lower with rates by the end of the year or through next year, but I think rates are going to remain elevated relative to what we saw during you know the past decade or so and i think chairman powell has basically said as much yeah and the quit rate um held steady at 2.2 percent for the sixth consecutive month so people are still feeling at least tough enough to do some quitting Stephen, final thoughts quickly i only have a couple seconds yeah, I mean, I think the whole point of higher for longer is real, and I think the interest rates are going to surprise people. I think they, as well, at the long end of the curve, stay higher for longer. And I think the curve will eventually steepen from the long end, not from the front end, as the market has been discounting. Mark and Stephen, thank you so much. Mark Hamrick at Bankrate.com. Stephen Rusciuto at Mizuho Securities. Thank you both very much.